Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our Realistic series. Yeah, alright. I don't want to do round bales, I want to do square bales for this map. So we will go with the Arkizan right there. This only does 14. In the, pre the previous version of the Arkizan, we could take 16 bales at once. This one to lease is 4,500. So it is a little bit pricey, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, we'll set up, we'll just go with standard on everything just like that. And yes, so I will lease that one. And then I'm going to want a baler to go with it. And we've got a couple of different options. So we can go with the base game ones in here, something like a crone. But honestly, at this stage, I'm kind of thinking we want something a little bit cheaper. Now, I really do like these with the wind rower bits on them. They're really cool. And they do actually exist in real life before anyone starts screaming about that. Um... Not very common, admittedly. This one right here. I used to drive one of these. Quadrant 1200. I hated it. It was awful. It has a shear pin on that flywheel right there. And that flywheel would... The, the shear pin on that flywheel would break for pastime. Like, if you could get through a day with it only breaking once, you were doing really well. Normally it would break more times than that. And so you had to get out and you had to wind it round and get it lined up. And then you had to do up another one. Um, you'd get hot and dusty and covered in muck and grime and oil and dust. And it was just horrible. Um, because you the type of tractor that you're pulling these along with is nice... Nice, big, comfortable, air-conditioned tractor, and you want to stay clean and tidy inside that tractor. So if you're constantly having to get out and get filthy by changing the um, shear pin, it just basically meant that you were grubby and then your tractor was getting grubby, and I didn't like it at all. I'm a bit fussy like that. Um, right, so we don't want a silage additive tank. Do we want the fire extinguisher? To be honest... I've never known anyone able to... Uh, you, you, I think you're now required to have a fire extinguisher on things like this, um, but I've never actually known anyone to be able to put out a fire in straw or hay um, with the fire extinguisher that's on the side. Normally, you just pull the thing over to somewhere where it can't burn everything else in the countryside and then watch it burn itself down. Um Maybe someone has been able to put out a fire with it. I, I don't really know. Right, what have we got for wheels? Uh, wide tires. Oh, I definitely didn't have any. Yeah, we'll just go with the standard tires on that. Uh, the colours were like this. So I like this one like that. At least you don't have enough money. So we're going to need to borrow a bit of money. And I think we're going we're gonna to try out this Class Quadrant 1200 just for this lot of bales. You get some money. I want to go into there. And I have zero loan at the moment. So we're going to borrow. Now, I'm going to need a bit of money anyway. I know that I've got the stuff at the greenhouse that I could sort of use some of that. But I reckon it will go with a loan of 50000 And then if we find that we can pay some of it off um, a little bit later after we... Because I'm probably going to increase that. Because we've got the stuff coming up for what we're going to be doing with our harvest. Um... So we want to go with that one, and I will put the fire extinguishers on there, although I don't think they're needed. Dealer label. Ah, cool. All right, let's put the dealer label. Five dollars? You want me to pay for your advertising? That ain't happening, sunshine. That ain't happening. Nope, not a chance. Okay. We'll leave it at that, and... I'm going to take this tractor down to the bottom and we're going to get the baler first and we're going to drag that one up. One thing, actually we're going to just do a quick repair job. So yeah, I was going to go and get the stuff from the greenhouses. We'll do that afterwards. So that's sat there, it's ready and waiting that the trailer is to go and do that and that is still on my to-do list but we'll do the baling and everything first. Yes, I am very much six. Six and a half thousand for uh, service on that tractor. Cheap at half the price. What a bargain. Um, one thing. I know that I've just gone and leased for nearly five grand the bale loader in order to collect the bales from the field. When we do have an auto load trailer that we could use, I could 
Um, like the, the usual rule that I have. Yeah, we're, we're getting all jerky because the um, the update in the game, and we haven't been onto this part of the map yet. So there's nothing to worry about. Um, so it might be a bit laggy in your video. The my general rule is I can use auto load trailers so long as I have the means on the map to be able to move the bales manually. And I do have. We've got the front loader and everything, so we could in theory go and load them up. We could put them into onto the trailer and we could drag them back to the farm. With the few bales that we've got, that would be the sensible thing to go and do. However, I do also have to balance out the fact that um, we are watching a series here. You know what I want to do? I want to have a look this thing so can you open the sides on this one let's have a look current bail unfold baler lower pickup reset okay there doesn't seem to be any options for opening up the sides unfortunately but yeah that side would lift up so that you could gain access into the side of the machine that side right there is where you put bales of string and that would do three of the bale uh, three of the knotters and then over this side that's all full of string as well and that would be for the other ones uh it holds 12 not 12 balls of string in there you have four there and you tie them all together and then you have four in the middle and four over there and they run through to the knotters can we climb up on here yes we can i uh, can't quite see under here so that cover lifts up and this is a slightly newer version of the 1200. I don't know if you can just see under there. Those devices up there. Those are actually the knotters. So you've got three of them over here. And then one, two, three there. So three are fed from the string on that side. And three are fed from the string on that side. And this version has got this cover on the top. But it doesn't look like it's got any fans. There's the knotters. They're actually quite well done. Like, they, they do actually look like the real knotters. Um, one of the big problems that you used to have was a lot of material and chaff and bits of straw and stuff gathering around on these knotters. And if you get too much, um, it gets caught up in the knotting mechanism and then uh, the strings will... The, the knots don't tie properly and when the bale pops out the back, the, the knots will pop open. So you, you're forever having to climb up and clean the string off. Uh, clean, clean the knotters off. So what they did was they uh, put a cover over it and then they put fans on them to keep it clear. The first attempt at fans failed miserably. It didn't work at all. It clogged it up and made them worse. So you very quickly disabled those fans. But they did eventually uh, change the design round and get the fans working really well and really efficiently so it would keep them clear and the fans themselves wouldn't get all choked up. So that was really good. So you had to climb up on top of this machine. You go up the ladder at the back up there and you walk your way up over the top of the machine up here obviously you have turned it off at this point um and that right there is a grease cartridge um that does automatic greasing to a few points on the baler uh but that there is the flywheel now a flywheel is a massive great big weight and when you start the tractor up, that starts spinning. And that huge weight helps to keep everything moving. So you've got that bit there is the ram. And that moves up this way. And then it moves back down again. And it pushes the straw back and keeps it nice and tight. Every time that pushes back, it puts a lot of strain on the tractor. This flywheel, a huge heavy weight, spinning around really fast, helps to keep everything in motion so that you're not putting all of the strain of that um, thing slamming backwards and forwards on the gearbox of the tractor. That's how it works so if it encounters a little bit too much straw and when i say a little bit too much straw i mean literally like three three strands of straw too much it's very sensitive this thing if you go over a slightly thicker patch of straw without realizing and don't slow down fast enough um there's a shear bolt that holds that flywheel to the main mechanism of this and that shear bolt is done through a little tiny plate that goes between the shear the the flywheel and this gearbox that's right here that drives everything else um that shear pin will break and so you then have to get up on top of here and you wind by hand that flywheel around so you, you basically you're sat here this thing is really hot by the way if you kneel on it you'll regret it that does heat up very very warm 
Um, so you basically, you've got to sort of perch on the side and put your knee on the side on there, not touching this one. It's really hot next to that. It's all nicely heated up with the oil inside and all the movement and stuff. Um, and then you bring this one up round to the right point and it's really awkward and difficult to get into. You eventually you find the right bit and then you lean right down in so that your face is right next to that and you get the shear pin and you slide it in through the little tiny hole and then you wiggle the flywheel backwards and forwards a few times until it lines up exactly right. The whole thing does spin round but invariably it always seems to break when it's at the top which is less than convenient so I mean sometimes it would break at the bottom and that's even worse but it, it, it never did it out the side over here where it would be easy to reach um, and then you've got to sort of wrestle around with your spanners and do the shear bolt up and once you've done that shear pin up so it's just a bolt it's a, it's a normal bolt but it's built to break at a very set uh, amount of pressure on it so it's a shear bolt and it has it's very very carefully manufactured to break under a um, set amount of pressure and once you've done that you then climb back all the way down here and you walk back round trying to scrape some of the crud off of your hands before you get back into your lovely clean tractor look at that thing look at that tractor it's lovely and clean in there you don't want to get that all covered in mud and dirt and grime and grease because there's a lot of grease that ends up all over that flywheel then you get back in and then you cross everything you've got your fingers, your toes, your arms, your legs, everything. And you start, you engage the drive. Probably nine times out of ten, it will start up and it will be just fine. One time out of ten, there's still a little bit too much straw in there. And it's not able to start up properly. I mean, usually if the front, the front is normally absolutely packed full. But you can usually get away with not having to drag all of that out as well. Like it's a, um, it, it's a difficult process to have to clean everything out of there. So you get back in the tractor and you start it up, and then hopefully it will start up. Everything's fine. You let it run for just a few seconds. And you carry on. If it hasn't worked out quite so well, this bit in here. So the straw goes up into here, and it goes quite wide on this bit, and then that pushes it in narrower, and it goes up in there, and it goes in slices. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, just where the fingertip is right there, there's actually a set of forks, and they come back down to there, and they slide back up through, and they grab the straw, and they take it up in a slice. And that goes up, pushes the straw up in a slice, and then the ram comes through and slams it back into the bale and pushes it back. And then uh, while that's going on, this is kind of like accumulating a little bit. And then it pushes up another slice. So it fills up this chamber here. Usually when the ram, when, when the shear pin breaks, it's because you've got too much crammed into the front in here. And it's sort of gotten stuck there. But also when you push it up, if there's a little bit too much material, like it can normally get away with that. But if you've got that being crammed full with too much material and the... Uh, the ram up there is having to push back too much. It's having to, it's taking too much straw and having to push too big a wedge of the bale back. It's just, all of it is too much. It just can't cope with it and that will break the shear pin. So normally if it's done that, it's already shoved the straw back as far as it needs to and you don't really need to worry about it. You, you can just kind of leave that as it is and when you wind the shear with the, the um, I can't climb in under there to have a look at it. Uh, when you wind that one back round to connect it with the shear pin, it does pull the ram back a little bit as well. And you can do that a couple of winds if you want to. So the ram has got a little bit of extra oomph to get down and knock it through when you start it up without breaking the shear pin. If this is completely wedged full and you don't move it very much, there is a chance you break the shear pin again. Now, if you do that, you might have to pull out all of the straw here and then climb in here hugging those things trust me those little tines on there when you're trying to sort of lean against them in order to reach further in to get the straw out of there not fun that's not fun at all it's the middle of summer you're probably wearing shorts and a t-shirt right there's zero protection against those spines and they've been used for several hundred hours by this point and have sort of worn thin on one side so you're basically leaning up against a whole load of little tiny sharp spears 
and you, you're trying to not be impaled on the spear so you can pull the straw out from under there. And while you're doing that, you have a lovely, every time you move, every t little movement that is made, every um, slight vibration against the machine is sending a lovely little dainty shower of dust and chaff down your back. And you're sweating like crazy in here because it's really hot. And you're basically being absolutely covered in chaff. And I realize I've been rabbiting on about this for ages without doing anything. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're stuck inside there and you've got this constant rain of... Are you really going to park right there in front of me? I'm getting irritated just thinking about all of that chaff and dust raining down on my back as I'm trying to change a shear pin and trying to clean out the underside of the baler. And I did like doing the baling some of the time. If it was going badly, though, I hated it. I really, really hated it. It, it, it was not a pleasant job at times. There were good points and bad points, put it that way. Like, if you could get the ba if you keep keep the baler running well, then it was fine. You didn't have any problems with it. But if you couldn't keep the baler running well, if you were having a bad day, or the com the guy on the combine had been having a bad day and left lumps all over the field, um, if you weren't really focusing on your job, then you were changing a lot of shear pins, and it didn't really matter. Like, you get towards the end of the day, and the moisture would start coming down. Um, and as soon as it does, it starts sticking a little bit in the baler and you wouldn't even notice to start with that that was happening and you break a shear pin and you're like, oh, right, moisture coming down. You can normally, if you look at the baler as you're going along, you can just see a little bit of straw catching. It's just sort of catching a little bit in the, the mouth of the baler and that's an indication you're running at full capacity. You need to back off a little bit or you are going to break a shear pin if you keep it going like that for too much longer. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dusty old job. It, it really is. It's, it's dusty, it's unpleasant, but um, let's see how this thing works. So, I've got... The bale size on this one is 220. Right, we'll go for 240s. We'll go for the biggest bales we can. Oh, wait a minute. Before I commit to that, bale loader, because I've got this Arcusan, it does take up to 240. Because some of the bale loaders, there, 125 up to 180. But if you have a look at the balers, something I noticed previously, that's a 125, that goes up to 180. 180. Oh, that's a quadrant. I thought some of the balers would make bales that were bigger than 180 and some of the... You know, Alright, so maybe I was mistaken. I I know that there were some bale loaders that weren't taking the biggest bales and it was a little bit of a jolly nuisance. Uh, oh, no, it's it's no, it's not those. My bad, my bad. It's, it's not the bale loaders. It's the bale wrappers. This one goes up to 150. Uh, that one takes the bigger ones. That sort does. And there's another one up to 150 and then we've got some different sorts over here this does take round bales this goes up to the 180 this is the bigger round bales though um that simma sipma there only goes to 125s but yeah the, the the standard bell wrapper only goes up to 150 so it's the bell wrapper not the bell loader uh, i got that bit wrong right here we go it's going to go to more than 4,000 as soon as we put straw in right it's going to go to 9,000 there was a mod that someone made for FS15, I think it was. It might have been... No, it was It was 15. I'm sure it was 15. It, well, it might have been 17, but I'm 90% I'm certain that it was 15. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, someone made a mod of the Class Quadrant 1200. This baler here. This is the baler that I have spent... Uh, I spent several summers driving one of these balers. I became very intimately familiar with this baler. And you can see right there, see the ram, the, the, the ram moving backwards and forwards like I was describing? And that arm there on the side of the gearbox going, oh, that is so cool. Look, you can actually see the flywheel spinning around as well, right? You go over a big clump of straw, the ram stops moving and there you can see the straw i doubt very much whether it will give you a um animation for the knotters working uh can we look down here oh yeah there we can right can you see that 
bar right there, those are the needles. That right there, those are the needles. When you reach the full length of the bale, that basically activates. And that arm right there, that, that pushes forwards towards the tractor and that sends those needles all the way up the full length of the bale and they come up to the top to these knotters that are up here and it brings the string up to there. The knotter grabs hold of the string, ties it in a little knot and then um, keeps uh, basically keeps hold at the end of it and the uh, needle, that drops back down again and uh, it's still got the string threaded through the needle so then you have this line of string right here. So you've got one line that's wrapping up the back of the previous bale, and then you've got another line that's starting up the start of the next bale, and the knotter is the mechanism that does it all. And something that I found out several years ago, and I've never found anything to um, indicate otherwise, is that the knotting mechanism on these balers is pretty much the same the world over. They're all the same. And they're the same as they were on the small balers, and they were actually invented, that the mechanism was invented by a woman who had a spinning wheel and she invented the mechanism for, I think she actually invented, the, the mechanism was originally invented by her for the spinning wheel and it was adapted, okay the baler is not supposed to be doing that, what are you I'm thinking that that would be the fact that the the, the, um, the pickup has got a little bit more hitbox <laughs> than is actually intended. I have never seen a baler drift. That is the first time in my life that I have ever seen a baler drift. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic. But yeah, the, the knotting mechanism was designed by a woman with a spinning wheel um, many, many, many years ago and it is still essentially the same design obviously it's more robust and there would have been a few tweaks and so on but the way that the mechanism works is the same as uh, when it was first invented unless there's been some change in the last kind of 15-20 uh, years that I'm unaware of but uh, for a very like I, I spent a long time using these types of balers and doing all kinds of bailing work and at that time it would the, the the knotting mechanism was a standard so if you ever did get a class 1200 um that would definitely be one of them uh, but everything about this baler is like it's a really good model it's it's really well built including the way that the um the pickup reel on the front is, is kind of rattling up and down quite a lot and, and bouncing about quite a bit. You know if, like, that straw is going in. You, you're not going to see it in here, but if you see the straw kind of catching a bit and stopping every time you hear the ram go back, um, then you know that you, you're really running at full capacity and you've got to be a little bit careful. That clump of straw right there, basically you go along at the normal speed, but you, you stop before you get to it and you inch your way through, okay? Now, newer balers, they generally have um, a flywheel and a, what, they, they've all got flywheels. Um, the, the newer balers will generally have a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, slip disc on them. They've got a, a slip clutch. They, they've got a slip clutch. The slip clutch, the way that works is when something is going that's what's happening that pickup is kind of like getting wedged underneath the baler and it's lifting it up into the air it's not supposed to happen like that look at it it ain't supposed to do that i see right it, it's kind of getting caught underneath that's not good it's not supposed to do that um yeah, the the slip clutch, it basically works like the um, shear pin does, except that it's just the clutch that starts slipping round on itself, and then you stop the baler and um, re-engage it, and, and everything is fine. You don't have to get out, you don't have to go and change your shear pin, you don't have to do anything. So much better than having to get out and change your shear pins all the time. There is a slight issue with the slip clutch if you wears it, 
wears out and then starts um, in, uh, activating all the time. So then you've got to adjust it. And that can get to be a bit of a problem. But I think the early slip clutches weren't as good. So I, I, at the moment, I had no idea if they work on a slip clutch system now or if they work on a shear pin system now. I've had some people tell me that the shear pin is actually better than a slip clutch and I've had people tell me the other way around. Me personally, having spent so much time changing shear pins on this exact model of baler, I would not want to voluntarily go and pick something that's got shear pins. I would personally, if I could, take the one with the slip clutch. It just seems so much better. It just seems like a much better idea. And when I was first driving these, they seemed to, like, it, it seems like absolute pinnacle of um, Baylor engineering. Like, it, it looks sleek and, and um, wonderful and quite quite an incredible looking Baylor and, and it was really, really good. But when you look at them now, they just kind of look square and chunky. And the ones you look at now are all, like, streamlined and everything. I'm not quite sure why you need to streamline a baler, because, it, like, it, it's literally doing 18 kilometers an hour across a field. Um, wind resistance has never really been much of an issue for things like balers. So I'm not quite sure why they make them look so sleek and, and fancy now. I suppose it's just so that they sell well. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I... I thought when I was driving this one that it was like the, the pinnacle of bailing engineering and I did enjoy it most of the time. If the shear pin wasn't breaking it was a good job, I, I quite liked it. Um, if the shear pin kept snapping then I was slightly less complimentary about it. It's always a little bit of an issue. You do also have to be careful when you're turning the corners, you don't turn too sharp. Um, a machine like this is particularly bad if you're Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.